Merry Christmas, LeBron James. <laughs> I appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you, too. And happy birthday, because you are Thank turning you. 34 yeah. just a few days from now. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like to be in your mid-30s <laughs> that you are officially in now? Right, right. I mean, it feels good. Um, I tell everybody who's, like, in their late 20s that, uh, you know, the 30s is kind of the best time of your life where you just, you know who you are, you know what you want, you know what doesn't matter, you have your priorities right. And I think in your 20s, you're so much trying to, like, please everybody or you're trying too much to please yourself but don't even know what you want out of yourself so you know when you get in your 30s and, and beyond I believe you just you have everything in place. One of the things I do love about this phase of your life is seeing LeBron James basketball dad. <laughs> we had saw this great moment with you and your son Bryce mm -hmm. the other day. So like if you missing shots or making shots don't worry about it kid. Don't you did a, you played a hell of a game. You ain't got to worry about making shots or missing shots. All right, good job. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, man. All right, go with your team. Bye. Good job. What is it like for you to be able to be with them on the basketball court, yeah. give them those moments of advice? Uh, it, it means everything. I mean, for me, um, you know, I grew up, you know, without without a dad, and um, you know, I can only imagine if I those words right there, what I, how I've been able to digest it. You know, as a kid, sometimes they go in one ear and out the other ear, but at the end of the day, you just want to do your job as a parent. And, you know, I sit down with them, you know, at, at night at times, and we kind of go over their homework and, and help them, uh, even though, you know, the, the schoolwork these days are a lot different than when I was in school. Um, but just being around them and, and being able to uh, tell them what I've seen from a distance and, um, and, and hopefully that they can be able to take it with them, you know, not, not only in that moment, but you know, for years to come. Your family feeling comfortable out here in LA was part of the reason that you decided to move here. You guys thought this was a good place for you and you wanted to go to a team you could build a winning culture, but this idea of, I have to go to the most championship ready team where I can definitely win a title this year, it wasn't your first priority. Now you've been quarter, third of the way through the season. This Lakers team is ahead of schedule on wins. You personally have had a great start to the season. Is there some urgency that if this team has more possibilities than maybe everyone thought this season, well, why don't we jump and take advantage of it and make some tweaks and really try to make a run so yeah, we're not waiting till you're oh, 35? Oh, man, I can't even, I can't sit here and lie and, and say I don't think about it. The possibilities of what we could possibly have. I've stayed away from fantasy basketball and, um, and, and just kind of lived in the moment. I think, um, you know, our front office, you know, I trust them and, and they know they have a, a 34 year old guy uh, that's playing at the, I mean, just as great as anybody in the NBA right now. Um, but they, they're not satisfied either, because I'm not. If things don't work out the way you would want them to any year, if this year for the first time in nearly a decade, you are not playing in May and June, what do you think that's gonna feel like? Um, I don't know, it's gonna be different. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and, I, and I've thought about I've, I've thought about it every year from, you know, from the time that I made the postseason, I mean, made the finals in 2011. I'm like, man, we gotta, I gotta get back to June. Then 13 happened. I'm like, I gotta get back to June because I don't know what to do with those two months. You know, those thoughts creep up into my mind. Is it like, okay, do is it more training, which is all I know? Is it more vacation time? But at the end of the day, I prepare my mind and I prepare my body and I prepare my game to play in the June. And if it happens, I'll be ready to go. If not, I'll be ready to do whatever I need to do to stay prepared for that next season. Well, Dwayne Wade has said that he's going to be in L.A. post his Miami Heat career. <laughs> you guys could get, I know where you can get a banana boat. <laughs> Just, no? Is the, the, I heard the water out here isn't too. It's not as. It's not as not warm, right? I don't want to fall off that banana boat into this water out here. You don't want to fall off that banana boat <laughs> again, is what you mean. You can tell America. Nah, you don't want to fall off of it nah, again. No, though they all fail. Mm -hmm. Why they ain't telling the, mm -hmm. they need to tell you. I need to get the footage. I got everything mm -hmm. else. <laughs> <laughs> this is a league where, at least in this last half decade, you need at least two elite players yeah. to win a title, yeah. or, or maybe four or, or maybe five, four. Yeah, yeah. but at least at least two. Right. On this Lakers team, you're not only the only elite player, mm -hmm. you are the only all-star. Right. How important is it to you that whether it's this season yeah. or this summer, this team gets another elite player? That would be ideal, and I think you've heard, you know, from the front office that their their ideas and their, what they believe they, you know, what we can do. Um, and that's gonna be my job as well. You know, I'm looking forward to when, you know, guys come up for free agency. Um, I'll be at their doors. Uh, I'll be on their phones. 
Um, seeing how we can continue to help this franchise become an elite franchise and get back to the mountaintop again. So you're going to recruit because... Oh, I've always recruited. All right. I've always recruited. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Is this something new? I've, I've been recruiting. I've been trying to get guys to come play with me since like 2007. I've got rejected a lot, but I've also have not got rejected. That's right. <laughs> a lot of people didn't want to come to Cleveland. Let me just throw that out there. So you don't feel it was you? <laughs> no, I don't feel that it was me. I, I tried to recruit so many guys to come to Cleveland, and we actually had a, we had, I had a couple guys. And it just Tell me now. Don't wait for the 30 for 30. Tell me now. No, I don't want to. I don't. But it wasn't hard getting guys in Miami, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so now that I think, mm -hmm. being in L.A., I don't think it would be that hard to get guys here. But we got to win. And, and at the end of the day, it's all about winning. That's my job right now is to show everybody that I can win with, with whatever. Now, one of the guys people have sort of loved to, in their, fa in their fantasy basketball, uh -huh. put you with is the idea of Kevin Durant. Yeah. He's got an option to become a free agent this summer. But then he had quotes recently yeah. saying that he doesn't think it's comfortable for other elite players yeah. to play with you. He called the media environment around you, quote, toxic. <laughs> what did you think when you heard him say all that? Uh, I was a little pissed off when I first heard it, um, to be honest. Um, I, I didn't know where it stemmed from. So um, I was pissed. My family was pissed. My friends was pissed. We just didn't know why you know, at this point in time in the season that, you know, my name or, or, or what I've done in my career was kind of talked about like that. So, um, you know, I don't feel like it's ever been toxic um, around me. And when I, when I hear toxic, I automatically thought like, you know, toxic is like you, you don't never, you don't want to be around that because it's almost like a, it's almost like a, a fatal disease. You don't want to be around that. But, um, Got a, got a phone call from KD. We, we talked about it. He mentioned how he felt and, and how the story, how he felt the story took a twist. And, um, you know, as a man, I can't, I don't hold on to things uh, too long. I'm, 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 I'm too happy in my life right now. And um, I don't hold on to anything that will, will take away from my happiness. So how did you two leave that conversation? Um, listen. He he told me what he what he how he felt and uh, he apologized on how it came out and I said all right we move on from there. Talk about other guys who might want to play with you. You said recently that it would be amazing uh, if yeah. the Lakers traded for Anthony Davis. It wasn't brought to me as when it wasn't like traded for Anthony Davis. The way it was brought to me was, you know, how would it feel if Anthony Davis was a part of this franchise? And I was like, duh, <laughs> it would be amazing. What I mean, come on now. I mean, I'm. Stephen Wonder can see that. Come on, let's not, let's not get it twisted. So, I mean, how it would be unbelievable to have a 25-year-old superstar in the prime of his uh, career to come here. I mean, we've seen what happened when, when you know, Shaq came here from Orlando. I mean, that's what the Lakers do. They, they go get out the big fish, you know, so. The same day, the same night that you talked about Anthony Davis, you also talked about that obviously you want to play with Carmelo Anthony at yeah, some point in your yeah. career. What do you think it is like to be the general manager of a team you're on and wake up the next morning to all those quotes? I don't know. I mean, listen, it's just my opinion. Um, but it's not like I'm lying fire under anybody's ass. It's just my opinion. People ask me questions. Mm -hmm. Hey, how do you feel? You know, would it be great to have Carmelo Anthony be on the Lakers? You know, I believe Melo can still play the game. Um, I believe I can help Melo. Um, I know Melo better than Melo knows himself at times and, and, and vice versa. So um, if the opportunity presents itself, I will welcome it. Speaking of Melo, I want to go through your draft class real quick. Number one pick, LeBron James. Who? Still playing. Never heard of him. Yep. Darko Milicic, kickboxing in Serbia. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> number three pick, Carmelo Anthony, not currently playing. All right. Same for number four pick. Chris Bosh, Chris Bosh, right? Number five, Dwayne Wade, yeah. currently doing his last dance yeah. retirement yeah. tour. <laughs> then let's go six, two through ten. Chris Kamen, Kirk mm -hmm. Heinrich, TJ Ford, Michael Sweetney, mm -hmm. Jarvis, Jarvis Hayes. Hayes. None of them in the NBA yeah. anymore. And so yet you here are you, you are. Are you calling me old? Here or are you, you are saying are I got longevity, Rachel? Still now, which one is it? <laughs> some of the best basketball <laughs> of your career. Uh -huh. I, I want to just read this. As yeah. we sit here right now, you are averaging the most points per game since you were 25 years old, but you mm. were doing it while playing the fewest minutes you have ever played wow. per game. So how come wow. Father Time has caught up with all those humans <laughs> and not you? I mean, I don't know. I think I've always taken care of my body. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I've always kind of worked like 24 seven nonstop. I mean, as long as you've known me, you've always known me to be, you know, very adamant about mm -hmm. how my body feels throughout the whole year, not just the seasons. I've, I've beat the odds. I, I never put a ceiling. I never said how many years I want to play. I've, al I've already exceeded that, I guess. I mean, the, the life expectancy of an NBA player is definitely not 16 years. Look at the rest of your draft. Class. Yeah, right. So um, I just, I've never um, taken it for granted. I know you've seen <laughs> what I've seen, though, which is that some guys are going along fine and then their game just falls off a cliff. Yeah. Do you worry about that at all? No, I don't. I don't. Um, because my game is so multi dimensional that I can actually camouflage some parts of my game that can make a decline and actually still be productive if that makes sense. I can do some things where if certain parts of my game isn't as effective as they were when I was younger, then I can spice up other parts of my game. He might fire one up. Is it over 50? He's got it! He shot that from half court. 51! Since right now, uh -huh. you are a 30-something playing like a 20-something. Mm -hmm. I know you're only contracted to be here with the Lakers for three and a half right. more years but it doesn't feel like that should be your last contract. Right. If you played for just a year more than that, with the way it looks like one and done is coming out of the NBA, oh, you could be to. playing I see what you're getting when to. your son, LeBron James Jr., yeah. could enter the league. That would be phenomenal. This is getting closer. That would be this phenomenal. Is getting, I mean, this is literally, you would have to just do one more year after this that contract. Would, that would be, I don't, I'm not putting that pressure on him. I um, But I want him, if he continues, I believe, if he continues on the path that he's on now, he has a very, very good chance. And if I continue doing what I'm doing right now, I got a very good chance too, and we can meet. And if I'm like sorry, like super trash when he comes in the league, <laughs> that would be probably my last game. <laughs> if I'm like super sorry, I can't, I can't play super sorry. So just make it until he plays. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. that's it. You just walk off the court. Yeah, it'd be like yeah, yeah. That'd be it. That'd be my last two step. <laughs>